Just a few months after the amazing success of Apollo 11, you know, the whole one step for a man, one giant leap for mankind story? NASA sent another mission to the moon. But things got pretty dicey during the launch of Apollo 12, which happened in November 1969. Still riding high on the triumph of the first moon landing, NASA decided to push the limits even further with Apollo 12's mission, planning to land on the Ocean of Storms, the biggest dark spot on the moon. For the first moon landing, they went for the Sea of Tranquility because it's a relatively flat and even spot. This time around, the goal was to land the spacecraft with even more precision. Commander Pete Conrad and landing module pilot Al Bean would get to spend more time on the lunar surface with two excursions planned. They would even get to send back the first color TV images from the moon. On November 14th, the team climbed aboard the massive Saturn V rocket in Florida while the flight director took his place at the Mission Control Center in Houston. It was his first time leading a mission, and little did he know about the dramatic events that would soon unfold. Near the launching site, some storms had occurred, so the ground was a bit wet and the sky was cloudy. At 11.22, the huge white rocket started to lift off the pad and zoom up into the sky. Conrad and his team were shouting in excitement. But then, only 36 seconds into the flight, something went wrong. There was a flash, and all the power to the spacecraft was gone. It was really scary, and all the alarms started going off. The team inside Apollo 12 was perplexed. They had no idea what had happened. But after some investigation, they found out that the rocket had been hit not once, but twice by lightning strikes. The good news was that the rocket's design allowed it to continue its mission despite the unexpected setback. Even though it seemed like they were in deep trouble, the Saturn V guidance computer was totally fine and kept the rocket on track. They soon got into orbit and said, hey, let's go to the moon. Four days later, Conrad and Bean made a great landing just feet away from their target, the Surveyor 3 probe. Conrad was so excited to explore the lunar surface that he couldn't wait to get outside. The whole NASA team behind this mission was worried that people might have lost interest in the program after Apollo 11. But they had a plan. The first color TV broadcast from the surface. Two companies were tasked with broadcasting the lunar mission live. In those days, it was important because having two networks joining the effort meant they could reach millions of people. However, even though NASA focused on TV as a way to connect with the public, the astronauts didn't really get trained on how to use the camera. When Conrad made his way down the ladder to the moon's surface, he had to open up a storage bay to get the video camera out. The footage was a bit blurry and showed only his legs at first. But it was still amazing to see. After a little while, Bean popped up next to his teammate on the surface, and they both took a moment to soak up the crazy new world they found themselves in. Bean wanted to make sure everybody back on Earth could watch what was happening, so he grabbed the camera, wanting to set it up on a stand. But oops! He accidentally aimed it at the sun, and most of the screen went dark, except for a really bright white spot at the top. Whoopsies, I guess. Even though the astronauts and mission control team tried really hard, they couldn't fix the camera. It looked like the image sensors were busted for good. Thankfully, the TV networks had a plan B. They switched over to a studio where two actors dressed up like astronauts did a cool simulation of the moonwalk. Very fine as you get they still played the real voices of the astronauts, though, so the audience got to hear everything they were saying. Apollo 12's story didn't end once the astronauts got back to Earth safely. In September 2002, a strange space object was noticed by astronauts. It was orbiting our planet in an unusual way. Little did they know that the mysterious object was connected to the Apollo 12 mission. Scientists initially thought the object was an asteroid. They were surprised by this discovery since they thought the Moon was the only natural object orbiting Earth. This thing wasn't an asteroid at all, though. 
it was actually human-made. Turns out, it was the rocket that launched the Apollo 12 astronauts to the moon. It left Earth in 1969 and came back 30 years later. What do you think happened to it during all that time? Named the Saturn V rocket, it had three stages, each with a specific job to get the astronauts to the moon. The first stage burned for two and a half minutes, lifting them to 42 miles above the Earth's surface. The second stage then took over for six minutes, taking them even higher and faster. Finally, the third stage gave a quick burn to get the spacecraft into orbit. Once there, it did another burn to send the rocket and the crew toward the moon. After that, the third stage was supposed to be discarded safely. Or so everyone hoped. During the Apollo 12 mission, though, things didn't go quite to plan with the discarded part. In order to ditch Apollo 12's third stage, NASA had to program it to have a special path to meet up with the moon. But their first calculations would have led the third stage of the rocket to the wrong side of the moon. So they had to adjust the target and the speed. Luckily, the third stage had these cool little thrusters that helped it turn around. Even though specialists had to adjust their plan, it didn't waste much energy since it was done in advance. By the time they let that third portion of the rocket go, the team had been going super fast. To make sure the part went to the right spot, they just had to slow it down a bit. Easy peasy, you might think. Yet again, things didn't go exactly as planned. In reality, NASA had a little mishap with their tracking system when they sent this rocket. It turns out the system was a bit off, which caused them to slow down the rocket too much and overcorrect it by just 25 miles per hour. This small mistake ended up affecting the rocket's initial trajectory. At one point, it even reached Lagrange Point 1, which is a special point in space where the gravitational forces of Earth and the Sun balance out. The plan for this third part of the rocket was to send it on a trajectory beyond our planet, making it orbit the Sun. It would have been our safest bet, ensuring it wouldn't affect future missions to the Moon by accidentally bumping into other spacecraft. But because of the miscalculations, this unlucky piece still ended up traveling around the Sun, but in a wacky pattern on the inside of Earth's own orbit around the star. It took 30 years for this unusual object to be dragged back to our planet's orbit by coming across it at the Lagrange Point 1 again, finally. Once it reached this point, it began to spin around Earth in a very unusual pattern. To eventually identify the rocket, scientists performed spectroscopy. This method allowed them to identify what sorts of materials were inside the object. In short, they were able to figure out the composition of the rocket by studying the way it reflected light. It didn't take long before they figured out that what they were looking at was a special kind of white paint that was used for coating NASA rockets. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.